Thanks, Joe. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Justin Reed, President and CEO of uh, Troilus Gold. I'm going to talk to you today about the, uh, the work we've done over the last four and a half years um, moving towards development of one of the largest gold and copper assets in, uh, in Quebec and eastern Canada. Troilus is a past producing mine operated from 96 to 2010, operated by Inmet Mining. During that time, it produced 2 million ounces of gold and 70,000 tons of copper. Uh, via two open pits, which you see in the picture. Uh, it was shut down in 2010 for lack of reserve. Corporate initiatives of MMET focused all their capital on La Cruces in Spain and Cobra Panama, so it became an orphaned asset. We acquired it in 2016 privately from First Quantum after the hostile takeover of MMET. Uh, we have uh, invested about $100 million into the ground We've taken the resource from what was a 1 million ounce underground uh, opportunity to a 13 million ounce open pit. Uh, we're three and a half years through permitting, feasibility is complete, and uh, we're moving towards development. Uh, we have completed um, our feasibility. Uh, Quebec is the top jurisdiction. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Most people here understand why Quebec's a great place to work. Uh, it's a brownfield site with a lot of inherited infrastructure, which we've invested about $35 million uh, upgrading over the last five years to a level of production readiness. That's providing a low capital intensity to a startup operation. Our feasibility is looking at a 22-year mine life on really only half of our resource. Uh, a reserve of 7 million ounces, global resource of 13 million ounces, of which 11.2 are indicated. We're going to produce an average of over 300,000 ounces of coal in a year. And throughout the presentation, when I talk about equivalent ounces, I think 80% gold, 20% copper, and a little bit of silver. Um, peak production is over 500,000 ounces, and um, there's a lot of upside beyond that as uh, we have a lot more drilling to do. All in sustaining costs around 1,100. This is a low grade bulk tonnage deposit, circa Alarctic, very similar to Detour, Cote, and uh, Greenstone. These type of deposits because of the capital intensity in front, and we're talking about a billion dollars US, you never really get a large IRR. What this is is a cash flow machine. At uh, sub $2,000 gold, our model will produce over $150 million US in free cash flow. At today's prices, it would be well over 250. We're located in the Fratet Evan Greenstone Belt to the north of the Abitibi. Same rocks, same age, same metamorphic grade. Uh, the real difference between the two is we're buried in about 12 meters of till and the Abitibi is exposed. Um, our big, I guess, breakthrough when we inherited the asset and looked at all the work that was done, historically it had been ex explored as a porphyry, really stratigraphically more than anything else. We took a very simple approach. We said, if we think we're the Abitibi, we're like the Abitibi, why don't we explore like the Abitibi? And we moved to a structural model. Um, 350,000 meters later, 98% hit rate, 13 million ounces discovered. I think uh, the team's on the right track. Um, we have 500 square kilometers. We acquired over 1,500 square kilometers through acquisition, um, purchase, and staking. We spent about $17 million away from the mine, exploring the core belt. Um, defined 500 square kilometers as our core district that we want to maintain. Uh, two years ago, we sold 1,000 square kilometers for $50 million, and we've been running our company off of that um, as it's being explored for lithium right now, I think. Uh, we have 30 million cubic meters of water in our two pits. I'll talk about how we're de actively dewatering right now, fully permitted. Uh, EIA has been approved. We have four deposits, J87X22, which will form in one super pit, which is four kilometers long, will be two kilometers wide, about 500 meters deep and the southwest, which was a new discovery, a uh, kilometer to the south. This is a schematic really just showing what we inherited. We came to market uh, five years ago with a gold X analogy, a nice little deposit below 87. It was about one, just over 1.5 million ounces. Uh, under 87, 1.6 grams, 25 meters wide, low grade bulk tonnage target, very analogous to gold X. Jump forward today. Our real thesis is Inmet, it's not that Inmet did bad work, they just did known work. All of their money corporately went to Cobra Panama and La Cruces, as you would expect it would have. Um, two great deposits, unfortunately what's happened at uh, Cobra, but uh, 
one of the great deposits of the world. Today we have eight kilometers of pretty much continuous mineralization. It's low grade bulk tonnage. There is a secondary overprint, which brings some very high grades uh, into the project. We've drilled, uh, now we're well over 350,000 meters. We've had drills going essentially for five years. Now that's our resource growth. Uh, and you can see our reserve shell, our resource shell in the mineralization halo below. The more we drill, the more we find. Um, I kind of hit on these topics already, but a 22-year mine life at 50,000 tons a day, which is the same size as Malartic, uh, is just scratching the surface at Troilus. Again, it's a billion dollar uh, capex. I'm gonna walk you through that. Um, at $2,300 gold, I think we're $2,550 and change right now, um, it's over $1.5 billion MPV. Here it is again. It's a little cheeky, but I threw in $3,000 gold because I think we're going to be there maybe sooner than later. We'll see what's happening. But um, again, it's all about cash flow for, for these types of assets. This is why Cote is getting built. This is why Greenstone is getting built. Um, once the capital is sunk, uh, a tremendous amount of cash is produced. The production profile is variable because we have four deposits with four different grades. Um, currently, uh, if you've been following the news, we've made a discovery called the South or the West Rim. Uh, the West Rim is on the west side of the deposits, uh, located about 150 meters from the edge of the proposed reserve shell. And we're over a four kilometer anomaly. We're currently drilling. Um, between 25 and 30 meters of almost two gram material, which um, as we drill that out, could be accretive to, uh, to the early mine model. Um, certainly we believe we're gonna be able to keep this uh, post ramp at over a $400,000 or 400,000 ounce producer. Uh, this is breakdown by metal. 35% um, of the gold comes out in gravity. Uh, there's no cyanide in the circuit. The rest reports to a copper gold silver concentrate. We will be the largest copper producer in Eastern Canada that's currently permitting. Um, that concentrate is becoming very important from a strategic electrification mandate of both the provincial and federal governments. Um, there's a breakdown of metal. We're going to produce almost 75,000 tons of con a year. That would equate to 17% of the horn smelters demand and be the largest single source for them. Uh, historically, 50% of the con went there. The other 50% got on the water uh, on the, on the St. Lawrence and headed to both uh, Belieden and to Arubis in, um, in Hamburg. Where we plotted where we would be if we were in production today. I think more relevantly though is the cost on the right hand side. You know, uh, we took a very focused approach to our feasibility and the, we're the first major feasibility to come out post the cost overruns of Magino and Cote and others that we've seen. And as such, uh, we found it to be incredibly important. We didn't do the feasibility for the market. We did the feasibility for the financiers. And we wanted to make sure that it was bulletproof. Uh, the other costs per ounce estimates um, from Greenstone, Cote and others are over three years old. So I, and I think they'll, they'll tell you themselves, uh, the inflationary impact will be felt. Um, the free cash flow at different scenarios, again, uh, if we take uh, $2,300 gold over 22 year mine life, which is only half of our resource, it'll generate almost three and a half billion US in free cash flow on a cumulative basis. The CapEx, uh, some will say for a mine at 50,000 tons a day, it looks pretty low. Um, I don't think our shareholders thought a billion dollars was low, but it is. Um, $443 million for a 50,000 ton a day mill. Um, if I was to give you that number from 18 months ago, it was 295 million. Uh, cement in Eastern Canada has gone up 28% in the last 18 months. Inflation is real. And so feasibilities are always a moment in time. And I think anybody uh, engineering a mine will say. $250 million in pre-mining. Uh, that involves moving a diversion channel in place for eight kilometers, which was, I'll show that to you, which was $60 million. Um, as well, there's a significant amount of pre-strip. Inmet uh, decided not to do any condemnation drilling on this deposit. As such, there is a three kilometer waste pile, which is about 10 meters high in the middle of our proposed pit. So I think we're gonna move it. I will say that waste pile is running about 0.3 grams. 
uh, the entire thing. So we'll keep it close to the mill. Here's the real benefit of Troilus, our inherited infrastructure, and, and I'm going to be quick. We're fully energized. We have a 60 kilometer, uh, 171 kV line to our site. We're actually drawing 19 megawatts right now, and I'll show you how we're doing that. It feeds the 50 megawatt substation that's been upgraded. Uh, the power line's about a million dollars a kilometer to replace. The substation's about 25 million US to replace. We've resurfaced a 40 kilometer road that we maintain into site. That's a, a million and a half a kilometer to build. The majority of the civils are done. Uh, we have services for up to an 1800 man uh, construction camp in place. And the single most important thing we have is underneath those pictures, we have six and a half square kilometers of fully permitted tailings. Um, Central line constructed. We have 10 years of capacity without, without having to do a lift. And then we'll go to uh, in-pit disposal, which is the provincial government's chosen path. To replace that today is $350 million US and probably would take us a couple of years of extra permitting. So you add that to our billion dollars, that's $500 million in total infrastructure priced as of two months ago with our billion dollars plus a $171, $174 million fleet, which we'll lease. That's about a $1.8, $1.9 billion build from scratch. So on a, on a capital intensity per ounce basis of production, Troilus looks pretty good and that uh, infrastructure brings in a lot. These are benchmark prices at $19 a ton. Um, 564 processing. We are a cyanide free operation. Uh, gravity up front and then flotation on the back. And as such, we probably save about $1.60 a ton there. Uh, the flow sheet there's a, is very simple. HPGR up front, um, crushed to 75 microns gold room, and then uh, column flotation, 92% recovery gold, 92% recovery copper. We have 14 years of data. We've also completed uh, 10,000 kilos of bulk samples, which we ship to, to areas in Pennsylvania. Uh, we built a complete uh, pilot plant, and we've produced uh, very saleable con. There is a schematic, uh, very, for a mine this size, it's a, a pretty compact system. We have 500 square kilometers. We, uh, down at Cressidia and Bayon, we have about another million ounces of inferred that we haven't drilled out yet. Number four is the Renault deposit, which is 100% Sumitomo now, where they discovered, Discovery Hole, I think, was 30 meters of almost eight grams. Um, and uh, we have, we spent about five million this year on focused exploration. We don't need more ounces, but uh, high grade is accretive and can be shipped. Um, we're about 70% institutionally held, uh, of which 20% is the Quebec government, Investment Quebec, the case and FDQ, all of who have participated on our financings. Um, the cash balance is in good shape. We're about $130 million market cap today thanks to the great market we have, and we're fairly well covered by the street. Our management team owns 8%. We've participated on almost all the deals, of which I'm the largest shareholder. Uh, our team's done it before. I'll just highlight a few people. Jacqueline Leroux has permitted uh, four mines in Quebec. Uh, she's making our job pretty easy. Daniel was the head of uh, logistics for the Eleanor build. We've brought Francois Baron to our board, who's the the ex-president uh, of the Quebec Mining Association, the last GM at Troilus, and we and Chantal Lavois come on, who just retired as the CEO of North America for Rio Tinto. So we have the team in place. We're three and a half years through permitting. Uh, our EIA uh, is our last major piece that will be submitted in the next couple months, and uh, we are being guided by both the federal and provincial government that we can expect to have all of our permits in uh, end of 2025 or early 2026. What I would say is we're a brownfield site with fully permitted tailings and the and existing mining leases that are being uh, amended. So uh, the impacts are very, very well known. We'll complete um, all of the required uh, detailed engineering. Project financing you will see from us very shortly. Um, and. Um, in a perfect world, and the world is not perfect, we hope to be in construction in late 2026 or early 2027 with first gold in 2028, which if you step back and look at it, and I'll wrap up, Joe, is um, from acquiring the asset, discovering 13 million ounces, engineering it, financing it, building it, and pouring it, 
Uh, if you were able to accomplish that in 10 years, that's a, that's a sprint, and that's pretty good by the team. Um, last thing, and then I'm going to leave it. We are permanent. We have 30 million cubic meters of water in our pit. This is basically proof of concept. Uh, the EIA is approved. We have $8 million of pumps and barges in place. We're moving 1,500 cubic meters an hour right now, discharging into the environment. We also bought a water treatment plant from Newmont. Uh, we need to use that for the bottom 10 meters for suspended solids. So we're doing that with our Cree partners. So if we need proof of concept, water is the single most sensitive issue in any mining uh, operation, and we're working with our pr provincial and our First Nations partners on this. That's it. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Justin. Thanks.